Hello Internet, welcome to another YouTube video, courtesy of your one and only favorite YouTube channel owner, host, and founder, AdventureLink. Well, this is my channel for AdventureLink, so what more did you expect? I'm the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> anyway, I've got some questions for you. Have you been getting misfires? And or have you been getting, getting the following codes? P0300, which is a random cylinder misfire or multiple misfire detected. P0301 to P0304, which are specific cylinder misfires on those specific cylinders. And especially P0341 and or P0340, which are both camshaft sensor codes. Well, these would probably be the end result of your ignition coil module going bad or otherwise dirty. And as a result, today's video is going to be removing and replacing your ignition coils and module and cleaning them on a Saturn S series. The patient is a Gen 2 dual overhead cam, SL2, model year 1997. Now a little bit of background about the camshaft codes. You can look all over this engine for a camshaft all you want. I'll even walk you over. As you can see, there is no camshaft sensor. Look, Ma, no camshaft sensor. Oh, no! Well, this is because this Saturn, that well, Saturn as a whole, as well as probably most other 90s vintage GM vehicles as a whole, instead emulates the camshaft se sensor signal through the PCM and the ignition coils and module. So if these connections are not clean or solid, this will screw with this, the camshaft sensing and those codes will set. In addition, if you have a random or multiple misfire code, you would also want to look at your plugs and wires. And you should also do this at, at ideally on the 340 and 341 codes. But this would also be a good place to start too if you have the random misfire code because that's usually, that's most of the time that would be traced back to your ignition system. Before we start the R and R process, I do want to wish a happy Valentine's Day to all the little lovebirds out there. It is Valentine's Day. In addition, I would like to wish a special Valentine's Day, especially to a certain Mary Beth Lewis. And yes, I can say that because it's public. Tangents aside, this weekend is also the Special Olympics Northern Kentucky Regional Basketball Tournament. I wish you all the best of luck as you as your, you and your teams five for your right to compete in the state tournament next month. But back to this R&R &R project, the tools and equipment that you'll need are a couple extensions, small and long, for a quarter-inch drive ratchet, 8mm socket, not shown, and a 10mm socket, also not shown, because I kind of have them both in my pocket. You also need some Scotch-Brite pads, some shop towels, and some dielectric grease. Uh, step zero is only applies to the third gen S series. As you can see, this is a second generation S series. Um, there would be a bracket slash clip thingy that hold the coil wire, the spark plug wire boost to the ignition coils. You would want to remove those first before you get to the ignition or the spark plug wires themselves. I believe it's either eight millimeter head or a ten millimeter head. I'm not for sure. But just I throw that out there for a third gen S series. Next thing you want to do is remove your coil plug, your spark plug wires. Doesn't matter what order you order remove them in, but when you put them back on later, there is a specific order. The order is four, one, two, and three. Again, here's number four. There's number one. Number three, because that was easier to grab, is number three back here. And number two. See, I'm wiggling number two. There it is. There's number three again. The coil wires, or the spark plug wires, come out pretty easily. You just wiggle back and forth. Wiggle it back and forth by hand. Out she comes. Go ahead and do the same thing for the other three wires and remove them now. 
The next step is to remove this electrical connector from the ignition module. You want to take this electrical connector, there's a little tab there, push it down with your finger, pull out, out she comes. Next thing you want to do is there are four bolts. One there, one there, two at the bottom that you may or may not be able to see, but they are there. Just feel around for them. One right there where my finger is. Then another one. Right down there where my other finger is, give or take. These are all 8mm head bolts. Just as a fair warning, I got two of them. First off, these bolts are somewhat lengthy, so do expect to take some time while you extract these bolts. In addition, be careful while extracting, especially if it's the first time you're going to do this project, because the bolts may break off, and you would not have a fun time. While I've still got the ignition module and coil pack still on the engine, I'd like to give a real quick mechanics tip. I would personally recommend that you remove the bottom two bolts first, and then the upper two, because once you start removing the last bolt, your ignition module is going to start swinging around and getting in the way. And especially if that's one of those bottom bolts, that's probably not going to be a fun thing to do. Try to recover that bottom bolt and try to fight with it. So remove the bottom two bolts first, and then the upper two. Now with the ignition coils off of the car, pretty much the only thing that's holding it in now is these little these little clip connectors what you want to do is push up on this front connect this front coil here for the two and three side which is this one here push up on that out she comes that easy you can see we've got a little dirt there already but go ahead do, do what you just did do that what do that to the other coil and remove the other coil now you already got to see half of the ignition module dirty but here's the other half look at how nice and dirty it is When I cleaned this off the other day with a wire brush, there was a lot more ick than this. In addition, where it mounts onto the engine was also pretty bad too. I used a wire brush to get it all off, all of what I could, but there's still a little bit of ick that could still screw with the ignition module. So if you wish, you know, you can take a wire brush and clean your ignition module off with it. That would save some strength on your scotch brite pad and save it from wearing down so easily. So go on ahead and clean the ground surface and both sides of your ignition coil with your scotch Bright pad. And then if you wish to clean it like with water or something, you may want to pour some electric, some uh, spray some CRC electric contact cleaner into this electrical contact here. And of course use paper towels or a shop towel to dry it off. As a quick mechanics tip when you're cleaning your ignition coil packs and modules, what I would also do, suggest you do, is clean the bolt heads with your scotch Bright pad. Now, obviously, these bolt heads are still a little rusty, which I would probably have to spend some time with a grinder or a, a wire wheel and a vice grip to get pretty much all the rust off of these heads. But you want to try to bust off as much rust as you can because not only does these bolts secure the ignition module and coils to the engine, but proper cleaning and proper contact of the bottom part of the head here will also ensure proper grounding and the proper signals being sent to the PCM and the engine for your camshaft emulation process. In addition, on your coil pack, I did both of these, so there they are. You want to also clean where the bolt head contacts on your coil pack as well for the same reasons you want to clean the bolts. All nice and shiny now-ish, mostly. Same with the coil tower heads. So pretty much from here, the reverse of removal is your installation, but I got a few more mechanics tips, and just so you know, so do listen up. First off, when I do put the coil, the coil pack and the module back on the engine, what I would do is, of course, thread it in by hand, because not only do you want to ensure proper thread in, but as I just said, the ignition coil and the modules also depend upon the proper bolt contact for the grounding and the cam sensing and all that. So when you get all the all the threads start all the bolts started in by hand, what I would do when you finally torque it down is like a four lug tire here, 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 and here, or whatever other order is fine too, I guess. Just so you know, the torque spec is 71 inch 
pound, that's inch pounds again, which is why I said to get your inch pound torque wrench, like I said before. Of course, if you have a wrench that can read foot pounds, you could probably get away with like 5.8 or 5.9 foot pounds if there's even a torque wrench out there and foot pounds that even goes that low. When you get the coil packs and the um, module mounted back on the engine and the electrical connector back in, before putting your spark plug wires back in, you may want to do a quick visual inspection of the boots to make sure they're in good condition. Also, make sure you put some dielectric grease on your coil tower heads. This way, it'll ensure not only ensure a nice, solid, and secure connection, but it'll also ensure proper clean a proper clean connection proper signal to the PCM and it'll also make future R&Rs of these spark plug wires that much more easier if you ever have to do this again in the future. When you have everything reassembled and you want to clear the code yourself or wait for the code to clear it, wait for the code to clear itself or clear it on your own, that's it. You're done. You have just completed the clean down and or the R&R of the ignition coils and module on your Saturn S. And remember, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticism, praise, etc., but not flames and such bullcrap, hit me up in the comment section. If you have any questions about the Saturn product line as a whole, which covers the Saturn S series, Saturn L series, Saturn View, Saturn Ion, Saturn Aura, Saturn Sky, Saturn Relay, Saturn Outlook, and the Saturn Astro, then head up the Saturn Fans forums, search the boards there for your answers, or otherwise make an account there, post your questions, as long as, and as long as it's within our powers to find folks there, even myself, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have in a timely manner. The subscribe button, thumbs up, thumbs down buttons, etc. are at the bottom of the video, just like it is on every other YouTube video, mine are no exception. As always, you can hit the subscribe button. Any new videos that I put on YouTube will be in your news feed. In addition, it will be in your weekly YouTube Digest email. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. It's been a venture link. We're going to close this video out, as always, by quoting Eric the Car Guy and saying, Be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. If it happens to otherwise be wet outside, make sure you stay dry. Be sure to stay, stay warm if it's cold. Don't forget to scan your spoo. And sometimes your pee slip. See you next time. Have a nice day.